Matthew chapter 8. When he was come down from the mountain, he's been in the mountain for the last three chapters, the Sermon on the Mount, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper. That's a disease spoken about in the law of Leviticus 13, 14. You really haven't seen any words of lepers. There's a few in the Bible. And the leper was, was a, a disease because of sin. This is the condition of Israel when Jesus shows up. And worshipped worship him. Now lepers were supposed to stay away. They were unclean. Saying, Lord, if thou wilt, condition thou canst make me clean now his faith here is lord you can make me clean will you and jesus put forth his hand and touched him you know the only ones that could touch a leprous man in the old testament under the law was a priest You're not going to defile Jesus, the Son of God, who is God. Saying that this is the word of God, I will be thou clean. And immediately, right in front of Jesus and before this multitude, multitude saw this. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And here's that guy standing in. <clears throat> He's cleansed. He's clean. He's made white. He's got probably the Bible speaks of the skin of the newborn baby. Baby. And Jesus saith unto him, Now watch this. See, thou tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priests, and offer the gift that Moses commanded. Leviticus 14, 4 32, Deuteronomy 24, 8 for a testimony unto them Jesus says go back and do the law now is that the church age now since the law has been written since Leviticus 4 13 and 14 the priests are going to have to dust off those scrolls because no leper has ever been healed outside Naaman the Syrian this guy will walk into the temple, walk up to the priest, say, Hi, I was a leper, and now I'm cleansed. What must I do? What must I bring? And they've got to open up Leviticus 14. And when did they find out his cure for his leprosy? Jesus Christ. So as early as Matthew 8, Jesus is already angering the Pharisees, the scribes, and the priests because here comes a guy who has never, ever gotten healed but one man, a Gentile. Now, how much more can you get from this? And when Jesus was entering into Capernaum, there came unto him a certain centurion. Here's another Gentile. Naaman the Syrian had leprosy and he was healed in the Old Testament. Now here comes a Gentile, a Roman commander of usually of a hundred men. He's a military commander. Mark your Bible of centurions. These gentlemen, these soldiers obeyed and honored Jesus Christ. And wait till you see what Jesus is going to say about this one guy. Centurions are wonderful men in the Bible, beseeching him. And saying, Lord, this is a military commander walking up to the man saying, Lord, don't you think Caesar, Herod would be upset? You are speaking to a Jew. Lord. My servant, my servant, not a child, not a family man, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy. 
I think we've seen that before. Grievously tormented. This guy is in a torment's liking to what Luke said, that Jesus said about the rich man in hell. There is no relief. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I'm come. Okay, let's go. Let's go to your house. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. Jesus, you're too honorable. Stay here. That thou should come under my roof. But speak the word only. Look what this guy believes in the word of Jesus. Just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Look at that. Just don't, don't make another step forward. I'm not worthy of you, Lord. Just say it. That goes back to Genesis 1. And God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. This centurion is, is a remarkable man, and he's not Jewish. He's a dead dog. Oh, wow. Unclean. He's hated by the Jews because he's a Roman commander. And he walks up to Jesus, and Jesus said, okay, let's go. Don't you think that caused a stir? And the soldier stops him with all everybody around the multitude. He says, no, just say the word only. For I'm a man under authority, having a soldier under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. I wish Christians would do that. And to another, come, and he cometh. I wish Christians would do that. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Saint Jesus, I'm a commander. I tell these men what to do, and they obey me. You are higher than who I am. As I give a command to my servants, you just give the command and obey. And I believe he's not putting Jesus down as I'm a commander. I believe he's saying, Jesus, you have the power and the authority. As I do, just speak it. That's what I think he's saying. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled. And said to them that followed, the multitude, verse 1. The Jewish people. He turned to the Jewish people. Verily I say unto you, the Jewish people, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Haven't you got yet that Matthew is Jewish? He just rebuked his own nation using this Gentile. Now, if he didn't make people mad earlier, they are now mad. He just criticized the nation of Israel, his people. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, the founder of the Jewish people, and Isaac and Jacob, no Ishmael. In the kingdom of heaven, the physical realm, birds, animals, trees, tents, people Abraham Isaac and Jacob will be there how's that sound have you ever met Abraham you ever talked to Isaac you know what Jacob looks like we're going to see those three in the kingdom at one place Jesus said God is not the God of the dead he's the God Isaac Abraham Isaac and Jacob they are living they're not dead. But the children of the kingdom. These are people who are born in the millennium. Shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So there will be sinners in the millennium. And they will go to hell. And Jesus said unto the centurion. He takes this little side note and comes back to the centurion. He gives a little lecture to the children of Israel. 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are going to be there in the kingdom. Some of your children are going to go to hell. Uh, Mr. Centurion, go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed the same, the self same hour. Jesus rebuked his people by this Gentile. I wish you guys had the faith this guy had. And when Jesus would come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother. Uh oh. The first pope had a wife. Mother laid and sick of a fever. His mother in law was sick. And he touched her hand. And the fever left her. She arose and ministered. That's what minister means. Minister means to take care of. Don't call yourself a minister if you don't take care of the people. If you live off the people and not help the people, don't you call yourself a minister. The Bible says what the word minister means. Unto then. Who? The disciples, Jesus, and some of the people that were there. She helped, took care of them. When the evening was come, after six o'clock, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out spirits with his word. That's twice has come up in this chapter. And healed all that was he. Let's get this for the healing messages now. Let's get this for the imitators. Let's get this for the healing services outside of a hospital or outside a nursing home. And, and, and the little... He healed them all. There wasn't a person that walked away that was not healed. Can you imagine the commotion in Peter's house with his wife and his mother-in-law? Here's all these sick people coming. I look like the Walking Dead coming. Ah, 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 be healed. You know the disciples we're going to look at. They wanted rest and they never caught it. We'll see that in a minute. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah or Isaiah, the prophet, saying, and look at the reference here, Isaiah fifty-three four. The prophet saying himself took our infirmities, unhealthiness, and bared our sicknesses. Now when Jesus saw a great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. Mark that one. They evidently have come out of Peter's house. He's healing all these people. And he says, Luke is better. But we're going to depart on the other side. Mark that. That is the word of Jesus. Mark that. And we'll see it in Mark 1 and we'll see it in Luke 4. Mark it. And get this. Jesus has said something. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whatsoever thou goest. I'm going to follow you no matter what. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes. That's where they live. That's their home. The birds of the air have nests. That's their home. That's their house. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I don't have a home. I don't have a bed. And you notice you don't ever hear the reply of the guy, I'm going to assume here, and assuming can make troubles and problems, so I'm saying this in my own opinion. He just turned around and walked away. Another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. My dad died. But Jesus said unto him, follow me, and let the dead bury the dead. Once they're dead, that's it. We've got living people to take care of. We've got the gospel to get out. We got the kingdom to tell people. Let's go. 
And when he was entering into a ship, his disciples followed him. Where was the guy who said, okay, I want to follow you, Lord, wherever they're going? I'll follow you. Where are they? Just his disciples. And behold, there rose a great tempest in the sea, a great storm. And Mark 4 says, a storm of wind. Insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. The waves are coming over into the ship. The ship is sinking. But he was asleep. And his disciples came unto him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We perish. We're going to die. Four of these men are, are fishermen. Peter, James, and John, and Andrew are all fishermen, and they're scared out of the dickens. This is no ordinary storm. And I know some people say, well, you know, you can't... But when Jesus falls asleep, troubles happen. I mean, you can't exclude yourself from that. He's asleep, and a big storm comes. That's another opinion that you can take for yourself, or, you know, you don't have to. It's not a, it's not a doctrine teaching that, you know, you're going to go to hell, you're going to be safe on it, but just the fact is, he fell asleep, and here's the storm, and it scared the dickens out of the commercial fishermen. He said unto him, Why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? Now, why would he say that? We'll get to that in a minute. But why would he wake up and say, Man, you guys are so fearful. You are little faith. In Mark 4 and Luke 8, he says, Where is your faith? Mark 4, he says, no faith. We'll get to it in a minute. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. He walked out and said, okay, hush up. Stop the wind. But the men marveled. Mark 4 says they feared. And Luke 8 says they feared and wondered. Saying, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. Man, they are scared of the storm. They are more scared is, if that's a word, by that the fact is because he, he opens his mouth and the wind stopped. Let's go back to the early part of this chapter, verse number 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only. Verse number 16, and the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Why are they so amazed that when he says to the wind and to the, to the storm, peace be still, why are they amazed that it listens? The servant of the centurion the word made him heal the word of Jesus the, the the devilish spirits were coming out of people of his word why are they so amazed but that's not the only thing and when he was come to the other side now let's go back to verse number 18 when Jesus was when Jesus saw the great multitude about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. Verse 28, when he was come unto the other side. Why is he bawling them out for, O ye little faith? I told you we're going to get to the other side. Why are you, why are you coming to me saying we're going to perish? He's rebuking them for not believing what he said. Come on, and really too, you really think that I'm going to perish as God before my time? Didn't they say that for me I had to be lifted up as the serpent was lifted up on the boat? Being lifted up wouldn't mean drowning in the Sea of Galilee. So 
So you lack faith if you don't believe what Jesus says. When they were coming to the other side into the country, the Gagazines, Gagazines, there met him two possessed with devils. Luke gives us an account of one man. Gets it very personal. Possessed with devils. Coming out of the tombs. They're hanging out with dead places. Exceedingly fierce, mean, ugly, nasty. So that no man might pass by that way. They, they take a different route around them. No one would even go near these two guys. And behold, they cried out, saying, Jesus went by, how's that? No one would go near these two guys, and Jesus was walking on by, and walks right in front of them or somewhere, and what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Those same apostles that Jesus just bawled out heard a devil say, Son of God, Jesus. And you know, after Jesus died, there in the upper room, they still didn't believe that he rose from the grave. Thomas didn't believe. They never did get it into... Jesus finally showed up in that upper room and said, this is the marks. The life of Jesus, he not only got it from his from the people, the multitudes, the scribes, the priests, the, the Roman God. He had a hard time with his own disciples. Three days, they're going to they're gonna crucify me. They're going to spit upon me. Lord, who's going to be the greatest? Wait, didn't you just hear what I said? That's a noteworthy thing. Every time he tells his disciples of his death, he's going to go to Jerusalem and die. Notice their reaction afterwards. They're not paying attention. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Even the devils believe that there is a time of judgment. And they told you, are you coming before it's time to judge us? Look at that. The devils of hell know that God has a timeline. And if Jesus were to do it right now, it'd be beforehand. And the devils don't tell us when the time is. They don't know. But they know there's a specific time. Devils know a lot more than Christians. James says the devils fear and tremble at God. Many Christians don't. And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding unclean animals to Jewish people. So the devils besought him, Jesus. They're begging Jesus, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer, which means allow, us to go away into the herd of swine. Devils know what is around them. Though Islam will not take pigs, devils will. And the devils can't have a man. The second best thing they'll choose is a pig. A pig is an unclean animal and is a as Peter tells us, a deceptive de uh, deceiver, the, man, the female, excuse me, the female. So they're like, okay, if you're going to cast us out, cast us into those pigs. That's the next best thing. There are plenty of people around. Why didn't they say, well, put us into that person? No, we'll take the pigs. That shows you what the value of man is when a devil will choose a pig over a man. And he said, Jesus said unto them, Go. And when they were come out of the man, 
they went into the herd of swine and behold the whole herd Matthew I mean excuse me Mark 5 13 says about 2,000 of them the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the water so there's your first case in the Bible of devil ham and the pork belly market dropped the stock exchange for those swine according to mark 2,000 pigs which was somebody's investment as now are floating dead in the waters below this deep place there are no more value to the owner they're dead they committed hogicide. How many jokes can we get out of this passage? And they that kept them. Now these are not the owners. These would be the, I don't know what you call it, pig harvester. But someone who took care of the pigs, like the prodigal son, who would feed the pigs. Then that kept them fled and went their ways into the city. And told everything. CNN. NBC, Fox Network, and what was befallen to the possessed devil dam of the devils. Jesus healed those two men. The devils came out of those men and went into your pork. The pork ran down the hill and are floating dead in the river. That's the report. Two men have been healed of their infirmities. 2,000 pigs are dead. Two men are saved. 2,000 pigs are dead. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. Ooh, this sounds good, doesn't it? And when they saw him, they besought. Mark chapter 5 says, pray. Or prayed him that he would depart out of their coast Jesus did not save the pigs get out of here Jesus so what is sail whatever it is whales pigs or owls if you harm the animals over a man's soul Jesus get out of here we just had recently a gorilla and an alligator. And the ruckus wasn't that the children's lives were in danger. You killed the gorilla and you killed the alligators. How cruel you are. This is said about written AD 31 and this is 2016. And men love animals more than they love other men. Nothing's changed. And I'm going to read part of 9 because this is part of the story. They told Jesus get out. And he entered into the ship. Realize. Get this. If you're dealing publicly. If you're evangelists. In a ministry. You're witnessing to your family. You're witnessing to your friends. You're witnessing to your co-workers. You're out there witnessing to the people. And if they tell Jesus to leave them alone. Jesus leaves. He doesn't stick around. He doesn't plead. Get that. If, so, if you're dealing with somebody and they come up to you and say, Hey, just, tell, just get Jesus out of here. Tell, leave. You just turn around and walk away and leave. That's what Jesus did. What would Jesus do? Get out of here. Okay, bye. And according to Luke, he will stop to talk to the man that he healed. And after he deals with that man, he just gets right back in the ship and see you guys later. These pork bellies I'm using that for a purpose. That stock of pork bellies means money. 
They can sell those pigs for pork. The money of those pigs meant more than their souls. These people that owned these pigs were rich. They lost out. And they didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus. Some people love money more than they love God. 